Some awful news hit the world on Friday, March 17th, 2023. This morning, Hollywood remembering actor Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick. Lance Reddick, passing away at the age of just 60. Tributes pouring in overnight for the actor. The passing of an absolute legend, Lance Reddick, due to natural causes at just the age of 60. Before we begin this tribute, I wanted to share a link down below where you can donate to Lance's family in this horrible time. Please check it out. This video will try not to be a somber one. Instead, a video to highlight Reddick's best work while showing just how many lives he was able to touch in multiple communities. Enjoy. There's enough in that files that you'll never make it through confirmation hearings, and enough so that my career is dead before it even gets started. The tree that doesn't bend breaks, Cedric. Bend too far. You're already broken. Congratulations. It's time to call mom and dad. Tell them that the second mortgage they took out for your degree was worth it because you now have a job. But a job is not a career. No, 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 no. A job is just a foot in the door. If you want a career, you want to be standing where I'm standing 15 years from now, then you had better listen very fucking carefully to the next 176 words out of my mouth because this is your new reality. You need a new desk. I have you for two nights? Depending on business, it may be more. Of course, sir. So when the old place get a facelift? Around four years ago. But I assure you, sir, she really hasn't changed much. Same owner. Same owner. Room 818. Armor improvements. 12 gauge steel slugs. Armor piercing. Hi, my name is Lance Reddick, and I play Silence in Horizon Forbidden West. The world of the first game was so fascinating to me. I'm not gonna lie, the thought of uh, actually having my face in a game I, was just really cool to me. Playing a character that's got a lot of layers to it that are revealed as the story progresses, as opposed to, you know, you seeing everything up front. I don't want to speak for all actors, but for me, I, I think that that's kind of the actor's dream. When you get material, a lot of times it's out of context. Part of the challenge is that you have to rely so much more on the director. Part of what's rewarding is, I feel like it goes without saying bringing the character to life, but the other thing is I'm learning the story as I'm playing the role. And that's just a lot of fun. One of the things that's so interesting about that relationship is that it feels so close from the first film. Particularly Sharon, he's, he seems like he's, he's calling the manager every other scene. But you don't really see them together until the very end of the second film. We didn't really have any scenes together until the third film. But the way the relationship plays out in the third film, it almost informs what happened before in the first two films. So you get a sense that they've been together for many, 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 many years probably even before the Continental. And the beat goes on. And I'm a goof. You know, one of my, uh, my favorite word that my wife hates is titty. I love to say titties. It's just from when I was a kid, you know, it's like, <laughs> The legacy of Lance Reddick cannot be spoken about enough. From the early days of my life watching The Wire with my parents, to stepping into the shoes of the player character in Destiny, Lance left a bigger impact than pixels on the screen. He was funny. He was serious. He was a great source of comfort to watch. On his last day before passing, he was playing Destiny. And as a primarily Destiny channel, it's important to talk about the impact he had on the player base. He wasn't just Commander Zavala. He was one of the voices that Destiny players spent the past nine years talking to. I didn't order this. Bring me the one who pulled the trigger. They'll know who did. 
join my empire. You'll keep your title and gain a seat on my war council. With my army and your light, the Cabal will crush the Hive. Then, the Black Fleet. Bow. Excuse me? One fucking guardian has been kicking your race's collective asses for nine years. They kill gods for fun and to turn them into guns for a meme. They genocide entire races for loot. They assassinated your last leader, cleaned out your daddy's ship while he wrote fan fiction about them and promptly fucked off to let you pick up the pieces. The only reason I didn't bring them here is because they casually began wielding the darkness to clap ass in new ways. All I have to do to make them end you is to tell them you have a fancy new gun or that Eris can make you into one. So, think about that before you tell us to bow to your sorry ass. What makes a guardian a guardian? We take our first breath with no memory of who we were before. Yet, we are inexorably drawn to the light. We fight. We die. And we live again. chosen for a reason, by something greater than ourselves. For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in, and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to, the future that we fight for. The future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle, we are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. What we have built is only the beginning, a symbol of what we can achieve, of who we are and our great purpose here. But the day may come when we will be tested, when all we hold dear is threatened. And then, we will see what each of us is truly made of. From the early days of Vanilla Destiny 1, Zavala's voice was everything. But in Destiny 2, we learn more about the character's backstory, one that Lance Reddick basically lived through. What makes a guardian a guardian? We take our first breath with no memory of who we were before. Yet, we are inexorably drawn to the light. We fight. We die. And we live again. chosen for a reason, by something greater than ourselves. 
For as deep and wide as humanity's rivers have run, it has now been reduced to a precious few, needing something to believe in and a place to call home. This is what we have been called to, the future that we fight for. The future we will protect. Shaped by the fires of each new battle, we are forged and sharpened into what we must become for the fight ahead. What we have built is only the beginning, a symbol of what we can achieve, of who we are and our great purpose here. But the day may come when we will be tested, when all we hold dear is threatened. And then we will see what each of us is truly made of. We would also learn about the hardships of his backstory through Destiny's Season of the Haunted. Before the Vanguard, before the city, there was a woman. Her name was Sophia, and she was a surgeon. She came to Lord Saladin's gates, offering her skills in exchange for shelter. Zavala was his protege then. He had been taught his purpose, and he followed it without question. She maddened him. He infuriated her. But respect grew to admiration. And admiration to love. Does it surprise you that Zavala loved? She was meticulous and gentle. Strong-willed, stubborn. Fearless. It began with an infant orphaned in a fallen raid. Saladin had taught Zavala duty, war, and the light. But Sophia showed him that he was more than an instrument of violence. She had one life, and she would share it with him. They called the boy Hakim. And he called Zavala father. In his joy, Zavala thought to abandon the light, as he had abandoned Saladin's ways. That joy ended as it began, with their son. When Hakim followed his father into battle, Zavala could not protect him, and Sophia could not save him. Hakim died in his mother's arms. Zavala wanted her forgiveness, but she knew there was nothing to forgive. And that giving up the light would be no absolution for him. They returned to the lives they once led. She found love again. She had a daughter. And when Sophia passed, he asked her to forgive him. Through each generation, he mourned. He asked for their forgiveness. And still, he has not found it. We would learn that Zavala cared about the player character just as much as anyone else after his losses, and even cared the same for Anna Bray. Anna, come in. Anna! 
Copy, Commander. I've located the central manifold. It seems the Cabal have disabled the ship's MAV thrusters. They killed the steering on this thing? Any idea what that was? Checking. That explosion came from the propulsion deck. The Cabal have taken out the primary engine. Have you made it to the bridge yet? Just a moment. They've destroyed the ship's navigation system. We're a dead stick. None of this makes any sense. No nav, no engine, no way to steer or change course. It's like they want this thing to drift off into space forever. Not forever. After the tragic loss of Lance Reddick, the commander, players started gathering in the tower, mourning and taking as many pictures with Commander Zavala as possible, sharing the moments and what Lance Reddick's character meant to them. It went further than that, players immediately agreeing to put on the commander's emblem, the push forward emblem, in every activity in the game. No lobby was without at least one of these emblems on, and it's the ultimate sign of respect for the ultimate commander. Players are now demanding that Bungie give Zavala a heroic death in the upcoming year, some sort of exotic weapon to honor him too, and ultimately, a great send off in a memorable way, nodding back to the days of Cade 6. But what do you think? Regardless, from the days of being a kid with my parents seeing him on the screen, to the characters on the silver screen that he played, to the pixels of the games that we play, to the great man he was, you will always be remembered, Lance Reddick. Rest in peace. If we do not meet again, know how proud I am of what you have done.